All right, one more video for this particular chapter, and now we're going to be looking at ionic compounds that aren't quite so easy to tell what some of those charges are. The, again, you're going to need this particular handout, and we're going to be looking at the bottom half of this handout um, for video number five. The top two rows on that are problems that you already know how to do from before. So what I want you to do is to pause the video, and I want you to go through and I want you to fill out the top two rows um, just to, for review and some practice. And then once you have those two rows done, click play on the video and we'll go through them together. Okay, so the first one is a barium and a fluorine. The barium is in the second column on the periodic table. Everything in the second column has a positive two charge. The fluorine is in the second to the last column. Everything in that column has a negative one charge. So in order to make my charges balance, I'm gonna have a positive two with the barium. So that means I'm gonna need two fluorines in order to balance that out, two negative one charges. So this should be a barium fluoride, F-L-U-O-R-I-D-E, okay? On the second row, you were given the name and now we wanna go backwards and come up with the formula. Well, I have calcium phosphide. Calcium, um, also just like barium in the second column on the periodic table. So it will have a positive two charge. Phosphide is in the same column as nitrogen on the periodic table. So it will have a negative three charge. And so if you crisscross the charges, or if you think about how you're gonna be able to make those add up to zero, um, I'm gonna need three calciums at a positive two, that'll give me a positive six. And then I'll need two um, phosphides, two times a negative three is a negative six, and so that will add up to zero. Now, all that is all hunky-dory until we start looking at um, what's in the middle on the periodic table. Now, I believe what he told you in your book is that if you see this stair-step line going down right here on the periodic table, um, everything on the left side of that is classified as a metal and will, is gonna have a positive charge on it. Everything on the right side is classified as a non-metal. Okay, so you already know how to find the charge on Aluminum, you know how to find the charge on the first two columns, but all these guys in the middle where the D block is, um, they don't follow the rules, and some of those metals can have lots of different charges on them. So if you're asked to make a compound with anything in that transition metal block, in the D block, you're gonna have to be told what the charge is in order to figure out what the compound is. So. Nickel is one example, and you can't look at the periodic table and tell because nickel is located right here on the top row on the periodic table. You can't tell by looking at it what the charge is, so I had to tell you the charge on this nickel is two. Now the bromine, you can tell from the periodic table, it has a negative one charge, and so in order to figure out the, I need to make sure my charges are balanced, so I'm gonna need for every nickel, I'm gonna need two bromines in order to make that balance. Now when I name it, I can't just say nickel bromide because I don't know what the charge is on nickel unless you tell me. So what you have to do is you have to say nickel and then you're gonna put parentheses. The charge on the nickel is a positive two. So you're gonna put a Roman numeral two to indicate that the charge is a positive two and then you're gonna write bromide after that, okay? This time I've given you the compound. So I have an iron and an oxygen. In order to figure out the name, I'm gonna have to figure out what the charge was on it, because I can't name it if I don't know the charge. Because again, the iron is in that middle section, it's one of the transition metals. Well, I know the charge on oxygen it's a negative two because that's, it's in that row or in that column on the periodic table. What about the iron? Well, if this is a negative two and I just have one of each, the charges have to balance. So therefore, 
this one has to be a positive 2 so that positive 2 and negative 2 are going to add up to 0. So that means this is going to be iron 2 oxide. Again, the Roman numeral indicates the charge. Okay, here I've given you the name. You've got chromium 3 sulfide. So chromium um, has a positive 3 charge because that's what it says right here. And we're putting it with sulfur, with sulfide. Sulfide you get from the periodic table. It's right under oxygen. And so that sulfur has a negative 2 charge. Um, if you want to, you can crisscross those. Or you can say, what do I have to multiply them by so that I get the same um, charge on both of them? So if I take two positive three chromiums and three negative two sulfurs, I'll end up with um, a positive six and a negative six, which will add up to zero. So chromium three sulfide. Okay. Now, so we've done some of these, um, we've done a lot of these together. So if you want to hit pause on the video again and see if you can do these three by yourself and then go back and we'll check them once, once you've tried them. Okay, so hit pause, try these last three rows by yourself, and then um, come back and hit play, and then we'll do them together. All right, this one here is cobalt and nitrogen. You have to look at the periodic table to see the charge on nitrogen. It's going to be a negative three because of the column that it's in. Um, in order to make this balance, I'm going to need three cobalts in order to match up with the nitrogen's negative three. So I'm going to have CO, and that make sure that that's a little O, three N. Okay, I'm going to make it a little smaller just so it's really obvious that that's not a capital O, it's a little O, because otherwise it looks like a carbon and an oxygen. You want to make sure it looks like a cobalt. Okay, so this is going to be cobalt. The charge on the cobalt is a positive one. So this is cobalt one nitride. Okay, CuCl2, what's Cu? Well, if you find that on the periodic table, top row right here in the transition metals, um, that's gonna be copper. So I've got copper and chlorine. In order to name it, I've gotta figure out what the charge is. Chlorine's in the second to the last column, so I know it's a negative one. I have two of them, so that's a total of negative two. So in order to balance that out, that means this would have to be a positive two, okay? And so then, to name it, it's going to be copper. Charge is positive two chloride. Copper two chloride. And finally, iron three phosphide. Well, the symbol for iron is Fe, and I'm told it's iron three. So that's a positive three charge. Phosphide, um, again, it's, we've done one like this already, but it's in the same column on the periodic table as nitrogen, so it will have a negative three charge on it. Again, watch these kind, because if you're crisscrossing numbers, you're gonna have Fe3P3, but you don't need three of each one, they're gonna balance each other out because this is positive three and this is negative three, so I just need one of each one, F-E-P, okay? And once again, your assignment today will have plenty of practice for you, um, so you can practice naming and writing compounds with transition metals.